Big show on Up and Adams. No more poop talk, I promise. But we do have Mark Ingram stopping by. He'll talk staying competitive in the NFC South. Hamilton and I do trade deadline grades. The only way we know how in New York City fashion. And oh, insert beep here. It's like I called for it. And Shams comes on the show to get me set for the Knicks game I'm going to tonight. I literally cannot name uh, a single player. Like, is Patrick Ewing still out there doing his thing? Is Lynn Sanity still a, a vibe? No. Shams, help! Lynn Sanity, what a time to be alive. Welcome to Up and Adams. I'm in New York, away from our L.A. studio. We'll be back there next week. Uh, Hamilton is here. Mark Ingram, like I said, Shams will stop by. I'm going to the Knicks game tonight. Very excited. Had a real New Yorky trip. Did the whole Broadway thing. Uh, drank my body weight in espresso martinis last evening. It's a great day. We want to hear from you and what you thought about this epic, record-setting trade deadline day. Hit us up at Up and Adam Show right now. 12 players. Check this out. Unbelievable. 12 players got moved yesterday afternoon. Most notably, we saw pass rusher Bradley Chubb head to Miami. TJ Hawkinson move within the division. Doesn't happen every day. He goes to Minnesota. And the big surprise of the day, Calvin Ridley. I oh, remember him. Yep, he moves from Atlanta to Jacksonville. We are grading a bunch of those big deals uh, after the commercial break, but some of the more notable moves of the day were the ones that were not made. So let me put this down so I don't throw it. Packers. I'm talking to you. I feel like I do this every day on the show. I'm talking down the barrel of a camera lens to Green Bay, to Goody, to whatever. Why? Why do you refuse to do anything significant to help out Aaron Rodgers? I am not even saying go full F them picks mode, but maybe go F a bunch or a good deal or a substantial amount of those picks mode for your aging back-to-back -back MVP. Time is a ticking. It's running out. You know it. We know it. What is the secret here? It has been three years. It's hard to, to not support your quarterback in a way. It's almost like you're trying to do it, and it's like an accomplishment that maybe deserves some credit because it's a, it doesn't seem like it's an easy thing to neglect helping your quarterback. Is this a stubborn thing is my question. Is this like a, a, a football acumen thing? I'm, I would be surprised if that's the case. This is Green Bay, the most storied franchise in the NFL. You had a chance to make up for all of this yesterday, and you continue to do nothing. So during this show, it's only an hour long, I'm going to keep asking my good friend Mark Voto, who's hanging out with me in New York, has OBJ signed yet? Has OBJ signed to Green Bay? It's going to happen I'm going to ask you every two minutes on this show because that's the only way that I can take back anything or any of the venom I feel for this team. Uh, but I don't blame Packers fans for freaking out. But I also was not surprised that they didn't make a move. I was a bit surprised about the rest of the division, adding insult to injury, making you look bad, Green Bay. If you look at all the receivers moved over the past few weeks, uh, as we take a look here, let's do it. You know, you've got Kadarius Tony, Chase Claypool, TJ Hawkinson. I mean, that's a lot of NFC North action going on. The Bears, <laughs> what the hell's happening? The Bears get aggressive and land support for Justin Fields. I didn't see that coming. Second rounder for Chase Claypool. The Vikings, they go all in. What a move, couldn't love it more. I'm gonna grade that an A plus in the next segment. They get TJ Hawkinson. Packers have the 26th ranked offense overall. Bottom 10 pass offense. I don't even know what to say about this. It's insane. 2020, I mean, they draft Jordan Love over T. Higgins. Everybody talked about that. They always go defense over adding people for uh, our guy, Aaron Rodgers, and they weren't aggressive enough to move up a few spots. They could. You tell me that Packers couldn't have Justin Jefferson, who's you know smokes everybody and and any uh, thing that he has, any game in the division, out the division. You could have had C.D. Lamb too in 2021. Let's keep going here. The Packers go D.B. They took Eric Stokes in the first round. 2022, the Packers trade away Devontae Adams. They use both first rounders to take defensive players. When they could have made a deal for, oh, I don't know, uh, a game changing difference maker that might win a Super Bowl for the Eagles and A.J. Brown. Or, I don't know, a team that took a shot like Miami, taking another shot yesterday, of course, with the big offseason move bringing in Tyreek Hill. Am I missing somebody? Amari Cooper? There's another one. The Browns got him. What are they, fifth rounder? For a fifth rounder, they got his services. So to me, it's a little bananas, and I don't quite understand why it's happening. Uh, and Hamilton is here. That's who I keep looking over because, like, I just, it's, I just don't get it.
I feel like it's like a stubbornness thing. Like Goody's like, not that he hates Aaron Rodgers, but it's like everyone's telling him to do something. So he's like, I'm not doing it, even though it's for the best of the team. Yeah, I feel like it almost has it, it almost has to be at this point. Uh, as you said, three years of this now. And we've gotten enough of a sample size this season. We're halfway through the year, pretty much. And this offense isn't working. As you said, the 26th ranked offense in the league. The run game's gotten going, but it hasn't even seemed like they've make, made positive steps in that passing game. It's still a slog to get through the game. We saw it again on Sunday night. I just don't know what the answer is here, OBJ. unless it is OBJ. Am I crazy That's the to only think answer. that that could be the move? No, I think it, it it almost has to be at this point. It's the only rational explanation for why they wouldn't have made a trade. Before you joined our show, I was saying to, to guys like Brandon Marshall, people who come on, or Chris Collinsworth, I think, too, like, that's going to be the move. It's the best football fit. It's going to happen. But, I mean, does o, will OBJ fit well there? Sure, right? Like, yeah. it's going to be great. Will he want to go to Green Bay? and live in Green Bay, that I don't know, but it wouldn't be that dissimilar than going to Buffalo. Like, if there's rumors, of course, that he'll sign with the Giants. So it's a very crazy, unless unless we know, you know they know something that we don't, he's going to have tons of bidders for his services. And yeah. I don't know that they're, they're never aggressive when it comes to getting him options, so why would they be aggressive for OBJ now? That's a good point. But, yeah, but it is only half a season, so the commitment on their standpoint wouldn't be as much. The commitment on OBJ's standpoint as far as living in Green Bay, again, only half a year. It's not like he's stuck there for a really yeah. long period of time. And you get to play with one of the best quarterbacks that's ever played the game. It would make a lot of sense to me. You also just wonder how long is it going would it take him to get acclimated coming off of that knee surgery, um, learning a new playbook, things like that. Yeah. But I think... With him and Aaron Rodgers, I think they can get on the same page pretty quickly. I did like hearing we had Victor Cruz in here, obviously a good friend of, of the you know former teammates, all of that. And Victor saying, you know, what is he doing right now? I bet you he's at the gym. Like yeah. he would have bet money on the fact that like that's he's working on his body. That's the kind of guy he is. So I'm not worried about him not being 100 percent or not being able to, able to acclimate. I'm worried that they're not going to make the move, especially yeah. when there's pressure here in our backyard. You see all the beeping going on. Those are the Matt Giants. Those are pissed Giants <laughs> fans making it known because. There's another head scratcher, and that's what we do here on Up and Adams. We break poop news, and we also talk to the fan bases that are disgruntled the day after the trade deadline. And I would say the Giants are right up there with the Packers because they decided to stand pat and do nothing. Almost everybody, myself included. Okay, so they get rid of Kadarius Tony, and that's some sort of precursor, right? That's the aperitif to something else happen, but evidently not. And they also did not move Kenny Galladay. And sure, that might be part of the reason why they didn't sort of feel the need to add because he might be coming back as we see Joe Shane uh, was talking about it, right? Didn't he say that he hopes to get him back after this week's bye? So that's huge. And if he can return, though I don't have faith in it, to being a thousand yard receiver that we have seen him be, maybe that's the feeling there with Shane and company and Dable, who I do have faith in like that. They have this Kenny, they've got the second rounder, Wanda Robinson, they have Darius Slayton, and that's sort of enough for the G-men to get it going. But you grew up a Giants fan. This is a bummer to see they didn't make a move. Yeah, I think a lot of fans are frustrated because they have gotten off to such a good start, and I don't think there is a lot of faith in the fan base from Kenny Galladay. Shane did leave the door open to yeah. the possibility of OBJ coming into coming what back to say? New York. Did he just say like? He, he said he said he's open to the idea. He was asked about it. It sounded like you know for him to say that for a general manager to show that maybe tip his hand a little bit. I feel like there has to be something there. Um, but I think the reason they didn't make a move, and I think this is something Giants fans have to keep in mind, is that this year wasn't really supposed to be playing out this way. They're not supposed to be 6-2 and two right now. I think everybody kind of signed up. This is a three-year three, three year plan, really, to turn this organization around because of some of the cap issues they had, things like that. And I don't look at this team as being a player away from going to a Super Bowl, winning a Super Bowl. So I like... The fact that Joe Shane and Brian Dable are willing to be a little patient here, continue building this team. Yeah, like because I think it's about, it's not necessarily about this year. I think they're going to make the playoffs, and that's going to be a really successful year to build off of. They're playing long ball. They're not freaking. They're not one player away from making. I mean, yeah, because they they're of still arts, digging out. But it's been so long since it's been exciting. I know. Just go make a move. I know, and I think that's what's frustrating for fans, but I think you don't want to sacrifice the long-term plan yeah. to do something short-sighted right now. Um, because, again, I just 
you know, I don't see it as a team that's going to be winning a Super Bowl this year with what with what they have, and I yeah. don't think they're that one player away. So I like the fact that they're sticking with the plan and they're going to continue to build this team because they're still digging themselves out of some of those cap issues too. Yeah. And you don't want to put yourself in a worse situation with that going forward as well by getting a guy like a Brandon Cooks, let's say. Are you mad for Mark Voto, born and raised in yeah. New York, getting gets somebody? You're mad? <laughs> you do? Yes. All right, we'll see. So I'm, go I'm going uh, on with Carton later today. Big New York sports show. I'm going on with him and Evan Roberts, who I know, who visited yeah. us on Good Morning Football, and I'm excited yeah. to, to hear their takes. I wonder what they would make of your Pollyanna optimism patience take. I'm going to guess they're going to not like that. <laughs> I, might, I might try to sell that as my own and see if they take the bait. So uh, excited <laughs> to hang out with those guys and talk New York. Honestly, the day after the trade deadline, I did not think we would be talking about Trey Lance, but we're going to work him into this conversation because if we're looking at what happened with the Dolphins, they not only land a pass rusher in Bradley Chubb, that move completed uh, Miami's haul as a result of the Trey Lance trade. So this is a really cool fan duel graphic that I loved seeing. So we're using it on our show great job by them the Dolphins got three picks let me explain three picks as a result of that Lance trade they used them to take Jalen Waddle then they trade for Tyree Kill and now trade for Bradley Chubb so I'd say that's a pretty masterful job and we're going to give a little love to general manager Chris Greer because that's amazing and uh, I must say Miami is set up beautifully to make a push for the playoffs and maybe not only that but honestly to contend for a Super Bowl and I'm not really counting out this year for that but I'm definitely not counting it out in seasons to come yeah, and I think Chris Chris Greer has gotten criticized over the years mm -hmm. at times, and I think this was just a brilliant long-term play uh, to turn that number three overall pick from that they end up sending to San Francisco into three star players, and I think Bradley Chubb is an addition that is really going to help out this defense. You know, they've had some issues defensively. They haven't been able to generate a consistent pass rush. Now mm -hmm. they have a real top-tier edge presence. How do you, let's talk Odell really quick. And tweet us where he should go, at Up and Adam Show. He must love that he's now bell of the ball, and he kind oh, of yeah. played it perfectly. Now trade deadline's over, and there's a ton of receiver-needing teams that are going to compete. Is there a fit that sticks out to you, or does your gut tell you anything? Or like your football acumen, does it tell you where you might go? I really think the Packers is the most natural fit. I really do. I think that's where he's most needed. I think that's where he could have the biggest impact and, so. and put up the biggest numbers as well to try to earn a contract going forward. Because I think while the Giants would be really fun to see, yeah. they're still going to be a run first team, I think. I think that's still going to be their identity this year with how they're built. I think the opportunities are going to be there more for him yeah, to showcase himself. You want to talk about this a lot when we try to think of landing spots for like, like Sean Payton, right? So friend of the show, Sean Payton, where's he going? What's important to him, right? Yeah. Control of everything, the most control he can have over what's going on in the building. Uh, and, you know, quarterback. He actually says yeah. it's, it's, it's not as important, the quarterback, because you can find your own, you can make it work. So for Odell, it's just interesting to think about what's important to him. And even more interesting, he likes being talked about. He likes all the mystique. But he also isn't, you know, he's got plenty of venues, mine self included, Odell. I've talked to you. Brandon Marshall's hitting him up. Everyone, you know, I, I imagine Von Miller on his podcast. You think Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey are asking him to come on the show? He's getting hit up from every angle from these player podcasts. Come talk to us. Tell us maybe what intrigues you, what your landing spot is. Increase maybe your leverage, your bankroll, your whatever, the bag of money that you might secure. He's yeah. not doing any of it, and that's fascinating to me. Yeah, and I think that says how committed he is to Agreed. his football career. Agreed. And I think going to a place like Green Bay, like, can you imagine the storyline if he goes there and helps Aaron Rodgers resurrect this team and they go on and take the Packers to the Super Bowl? They go on this amazing run. he comes back to the Giants and they go on some amazing run. That, you're back in New York. That too. I don't but. know. Do you really want, like, a, is he going to get rid of that tattoo of New York on his back and do, like, a Lambeau field with a bunch of cheese heads on top of it? <laughs> I just don't see it happening. All right. Coming up, we're going to do trade deadline grades. Look at everyone's, everyone's, it's like a laugh track in the background. Everyone's forced to laugh. It's so awful. All right. New York style twist. Mark Ingram is on the way. This Justin Forbes is reporting, as well as everyone in the sports world, that Dan Snyder and Tanya Snyder have hired Bank of America to sell the Washington Commanders. It's a bit shocking. It should happen. It's a good thing that it's happening. It's a bit shocking that it's happening because he has been so adamant through the years about selling the team and, and not wanting to do it. But the, the disfunct 
uh, it just stinks. So it's a, a, a good move, and it'll be interesting to see who the bidders are and what they do with the team, which I think is long overdue for a bit of a makeover. I don't know if that means team colors. I don't know if that means changing the name back to the Washington football team, which everybody really liked, uh, but to sort of uh, you know, clean it up and, and make it pretty again. So. Uh, as we move forward here, it's it's sort of a bit shocking news. We're not going to really get into it, but uh, I, I think overall a great move for the National Football League that I love so dearly. All right, trade deadline was yesterday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Some teams made moves, and some teams like the Giants and the Packers did not. But we're going to do some trade grades. I hated school, so I didn't want to do A, B, C, D, or F. I was a very, like, mm, B plus, B minus, C plus situational student. Uh, I was always at the buzzer, extra credit. Like, how do I not fail your class? Can I wash your car, teacher? What, what do I need to do? We're going to do it in New York City style as we're here this week, Hamilton and I, so we're going to grade things. I will take the team perspective. Hamilton will grade from the player perspective on all of these. Uh, and instead of using those boring letters, we are going to use New York positives or New York negatives about being in this city uh, if we don't like the deal. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Vikings and how they landed TJ Hawkinson, this tight end who's playing out of his mind of late, uh, and a couple of fourth round picks from the Lions, all in exchange for a second second and third rounder. Okay, tweet us it up in Adam's show. To me, this is a great thing. It's about as close to an A-plus as you can get yesterday. It's like when you catch, you need to get on the 6 train, you got to catch the Metro North at Grand Central, and you catch the Express, and you're going down the stairs, and the doors are open, and you get out, and, every, and the, the car is empty, and it's one of the new freshly clean cars, so it kind of smells like bleach, but it's better than anything else that you could possibly imagine that train car smelling like, and you hit the Express. Because for Minnesota, Hawkinson having a career year, posting career Career highs in yards per game, yards per catch. You've got Irv Smith Jr. who want to show up, but he's banged up. He can't stay on the field, and they haven't really gotten much production out of that spot. So good luck, everyone, trying to double Justin Jefferson now. What a move for this fan base. Uh, and for Lions fans, sending your former top 10 pick to a divisional rival, it has to feel, you know, not great. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I what? think that's a rough one. Sending what? a guy in the division that was a top 10 pick is, uh, yeah, it's tough for the fan base to swallow. It's like when you're, you know, we talk about this a lot. It's like when you're walking down the sidewalk in New York City, you guys, my, my, my wonderful crew here in New York, and you get that, like, something falls on you, like some sort of mystery liquid. liquid. That, mystery liquid? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, God, I hope that was from an air conditioner. Like, please, God, let that be some ooze from an air conditioner, because it really could be anything. And Lions fans, I feel you. Yeah, and on Hawkinson's side of things, it's like catching that express, but it's in the middle of July, the AC isn't working, <laughs> and you're like in between two sweaty guys, <laughs> like it's just, you know, you're getting like to your- Like their armpits, they're holding that thing, and you're like right here, like, Yeah. Oh! <laughs> you hope it doesn't stop short, yeah. Yeah. Um, because you're getting to your destination the way that you want it, which for Hawkinson is the playoffs. Yes. And I think the Vikings are destined to be there. And it pays off in the end because of that, but it's just not going to be the most comfortable ride. I think because of Jefferson, because of some of the ups and downs we see with Cousins sometimes, yeah. it may not be week to week, like the type of production that yeah. Hawkinson is going to want to put up, but obviously the end result is going to be better. He's going to get to the playoffs. But I think like there were situations that could have been better for Hawkinson, like a Green Bay, like a Tennessee, where yeah. I feel like he could have been a more featured But talk option. to me about a Kirk Cousins to a tight end situation. Historically loves to throw into that position. Yeah, he's he's had some good rapport with Kyle Rudolph, but I, I just don't think historically, yeah, but he, even before when he was with the command, you know, but you don't think so? You don't think he's going to yeah, get fed? Yeah, but with Justin Jefferson, yeah, like, I guess and feeling, it's, you know, there's, nice to be like they're going to be games where he goes off. I just love that Kevin O'Connor, yeah. that they just, they're going all in, just oh, making yeah. that kind of move. Like, that's, if you're the Packers, you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like if you're the Bears fans, you are juiced this morning for any sign of life, like any shot in the arm. That's what yeah. we love about it. All right, let's talk about, you know, when I think Bradley Chubb, I think when he was drafted, he had those, like, planet shoes like he had the whole like uh not like Astro World, but it was all like he was very like, into He's the like planets. Obsessed remember, with NASA. obsessed with NASA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he went from the Broncos to the Dolphins, so from the sky to the sea to swim with those Dolphins for a first rounder, a fourth rounder, and Chase Edmonds catching strays out here on the street. Unbelievable. Miami, to me, to put into New York terms to grade this thing, getting Bradley Chubb is like going to a New York classic institution, Peter Luger's, because it's not like. 
You want to go, but it takes a lot to get there. You got to get all the way to Brooklyn. You got to cross that Williamsburg Bridge somehow. It's cash only, which is annoying. You got to get cash to go there. It's expensive. And everybody's so obsessed with it that you want to not like it. Like you want to be like, this is yeah. not going to be as good as advertised or whatever. But at the end, you're like, damn, that was a great steak. Look, that bacon is not that I would eat that, but that's so delicious. It was totally worth it. And to me, that's just like giving up a first rounder for Bradley Chubb and what that will be. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, I love this trade for the Dolphins. Really? And, I, and I love it for Bradley Chubb, too. To me, for him personally, it's like making a trip to the Botanical Gardens. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just need to... I've never been. Have you? Of course. I, I love going there. Um, <laughs> Kelly and I go all the time. Really? Yeah. That. That's cute. Yeah, because sometimes you just need a change of scenery. Right. And I think that's, that's what this is for him. You get... Out of Denver, a weird situation this year there. You go to Miami where you're going to get a chance to play in the playoffs, I think, with the way that this roster is constructed Smell right now. Smell the petunias. Now, yeah. when you go, do, do birds somehow try to nest in your hair? No, because I don't know what this weird thing is with you and birds, but that doesn't happen. What about your beard? <laughs> I'm just worried about you out in, that, out in that botanical garden wildlife situation. Somebody might mistake it uh, as a place to live on your face. No, that okay. does not happen. But it's, you like the fit. I love the fit, and I love, and I also love like w like with the botanical garden. Sometimes you can spend, you know, you can spend an hour there if you want to. It's not a long term commitment. Just like him, he's a pending free agent. If he doesn't like it there, he can move on pretty quickly. But if he does like it there, he can stay a while. Who here has been to the botanical gardens in the last ten years? Oh wow! There we go. Everybody, yeah. shoot. And it's right next to Arthur Ave. You can go over to Casa de la Mozzarella, get grab a nice sandwich, get some ravi ravioli get some, at Borgatti's. It's great. All yeah. right, I like it. Okay, so we are in on the Bradley Chubb. There's no, there's no negative here, right? No, no negative. Yeah, no negative on either side. <laughs> we're, I love we're it. in on it. All right, let's go to the. Okay, this was the surprise, right? The Jags land Calvin Ridley, and there's conditional picks in 2023 and 2024, and for Jacksonville. This is like when you come to New York City and you get your slice of Joe's pizza. You can't make a New York trip without it. It's the best New York slice in the business. And you can't, it's just like a football world. You can't build around your young quarterback without getting him a legit number one wide receiver. This is it. It's a perfect match. It hits every time. Now, it might be a bit of a wait. Like, that's like, you know, it has been the six months that I've had to wait to get Joe since I haven't been here. But it has been going so well for them with this turnaround with what's going on with the Jags. And it's great to get Trevor Lawrence, a guy that we know, we know can put up 1,400 yards in this business. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And, and again, it's not like the Jaguars. I think the Jaguars kind of know what the season's going to be so they yeah. can be patient and they have the luxury of waiting. Um, Are you still him. a big Jags and fan? I think I do love the Jags. The Jacksonville fans are the best. I feel best. like you've kind of fallen off of the Jags. No, I mean, I have to I have to love everybody. I love all these teams, but I, the Jags have a very special place in my heart, and I'm still very much I weirdly have, like, deja vu from, from something talking Jags with you, like, yeah. Good Morning Football or something. I'm like, Yannick Ngakwe just got, went, went into oh, my man. head. Yeah. What a throwback that is. Yeah. I found when I was in Indianapolis not long ago. Right. Okay. Next, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, but I didn't get, yeah. Yeah, go um, ahead, do what you want to do. Yeah, for the... <laughs> For Calvin Ridley, I look at it like, you know, you're running late, you end up missing your Uber, you get dinged on your rating, it, it feels like it's a disaster. Yeah. Um, Hit by a puddle. Yeah. But trying then to you, get a cab. Then you walk outside, you hail the cab, and you get inside, and you realize the driver's Ben Bailey. You're in cash cab. <laughs> and, you know. Cash cab. <laughs> Who doesn't love cash cab? It's a great surprise. We didn't really see this coming. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you you're still... Like, you still have to earn your way into it being something positive. You know, it's not like it's a it's a gimme. You still got to get some of the questions right and 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 earn it. That's but um, one. but yeah, if he's able to do that, I think it's a great opportunity in Jacksonville to get to play with with a talented young quarterback. Uh, well done. I did not see that coming. I did not see the cash cab coming here on the show. Up and Adam show with your uh, draft grades using New York or just whatever city you're in uh, as a grading system. Uh, the city I'm from is Chicago, and they dealt a second-round pick to land Chase Claypool from the Steelers. Take that, Green Bay. Shots fired. Now, for the Bears, I think this is like you're going out to get some coffee. You're hungover. Maybe you're not. I don't know. And then you randomly in New York run into like a Jay-Z or a Sarah Jessica Parker, like a New York City icon, a classic New York encounter. You didn't expect it to happen. You're going about your business. You're arguing with your boyfriend on the phone, but it ends up making your day. And you see them and you're like, that's cool. Maybe you don't even bother them, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, everything told us the Bears were going to be the biggest sellers. 
at the trade deadline. And it made sense for them to be. And instead, hey, polls, you go and make an aggressive move to land an awesome target, which is going to inspire confidence with that fan base in that locker room and especially with their young quarterback. Yeah, and I think it's it's got to be encouraging as a Bears fan because it's not just like we're gutting the team just for assets. You get a good young player that can be a foundational piece to this team going forward. So, yeah. do you have a weird New York encounter? Um, or like a remember, very New York encounter. I remember being I, like. I remember being like 10 or 11 and like seeing Jerry Orbach and I thought that was so cool. I used to love watching Law and Order with my parents. Like this is, this the is late, awesome. Yeah, the yes, late great. Yeah. The late great. That's amazing. Yeah. And so you remember seeing that where you're like, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 I was dun, fired up. Dun. What about I remember you? I moved, yeah, I moved to New York uh, like 12 years ago, 11 years ago now. And I was walking home from somewhere I was very late. And I, I was, it was early in the morning. It was like five or six in the morning. And I was the only one walking down Broadway, South and Broadway, like by NYU. And I was walking, there's no one on the street. And I see someone walking towards me and I'm trying to walk to the subway. And he's like two blocks down. It's just me and him, like, like wasteland. No, it's like five, five in the morning on like a Sunday morning. And he walks closer and closer. So you like, you know, you're just like staring at this person and, and like passes me, Spike Lee just passes me. And we walk, and he walk, and I just, I just, wow. and, then, and I had no one to tell because there was no <laughs> one around, and I was like, that. and I just thought, and I just kept, I kept walking, and it was like the week I had moved to New York, so I was at some like club or something, and I just thought to myself, like, that's my New York moment. Like, what's cooler than that? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Weekend yeah. to get Spike Lee. That's a weekend, cool. yeah. It was really, really wild. I've never seen like a Jay Z or a Sarah Jessica Parker yeah. or anybody. I've never, never done that. Um, but who knows who I'll see at the Knicks game tonight? That's true. You know, know Spike's going to be there. Yeah, I know. I'll be like, yeah, I'm sure he'll remember me. Uh, <laughs> I was in bad shape that morning. All right. Last but not least, are we going to break now, Connor, or can we do this last one? Should we go to break? Okay. Uh, the Bills, we have to talk about this. So the Bills do this sneaky move. It's almost like a house money luxury VIP move. They land Naeem Hines, who we love, from the Colts in exchange for Zach Moss and a sixth-round pick. Um... This one is personal. Hamilton and I have been friends for a long time. There was once a snowstorm in New York City, and it was also Hamilton's birthday. So for this, it's like doing something excessive. Like, you don't need to do it. You're not trying to, like, buy milk because you need cereal. You're doing something almost just gluttonous. Yeah. Um, and it was Hamilton's birthday during the snowstorm, and we went... And we went to Nobu and spent an, a, a ridiculous amount of money. Do you remember that? Yeah. Ridiculous amount of money. Just, just <laughs> Hamilton and I. I didn't have money to spend like this. I don't know what I was doing. And then we went, I believe, to the Mandarin Oriental across the street. And we were drinking $70 drinks out of, like, beakers. Yeah, it got a little fuzzy at that point. <laughs> but yeah, there was, like, smoke coming out of them and all sorts of things going on. And it was completely know. excessive. And we oh. and then we had to stay at some, like, awful hotel on the west side. And it was our whole crew stayed at this hotel. But it was, you know, did you need it? No. But was it awesome? And did it make the experience completely better? Of course. The Bills didn't need Naeem, but he's going to make it better. Yeah, he definitely is. I love the fit there. <laughs> and I love it for him. It, for him, it's like you're, you're going to, like, the corner pizza spot. You're standing on line. And your friend calls you to come over to Carbone, yeah. and he's got a table for you. Yeah. You know, the Colts are, I feel like they're a little bit of a sinking ship right now. He gets to go to one of the most explosive offenses We're in the NFL and play with Josh Allen. I'm really happy for him. We love him. As you long know. as I believe that night ended with you you making a poor decision to eat sea scallops at about one in the morning at Morea in Columbus yeah. Circle. Do you remember that? Yeah, I Not remember. Not smart. I, I remember having my hoodie on in the background of GMF. Not the whole smart. Yeah. No, you wanted Alvin <laughs> Kamara to go to Buffalo. It didn't yeah. happen. I know one person who's happier than me about that. That is Mark Ingram, who is joining us after this. Mark Ingram on the show. We'll talk. Listen, they couldn't have traded him because the Saints are making the playoffs. You heard me, Ingram. Yeah, 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 I'm ready for war. I'm destined for greatness. That's where to my hobby that lead. I'm up on the scene. I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah, I'm ready for war. I'm ready for war tonight. I'm ready. The side of the score. The side of the score tonight. Love that visor, love that player. Joining us now, someone who is more than just a guest. He is downright family, visiting with us every week, unless he's flying across the pond or across the country. <laughs> Late night, he's a Heisman Trophy winner in his 12th NFL season, Mr. Mark Ingram. How are you? It's Kay. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Uh, I know you're doing great, and I'm sorry to hear about your injury. It was against the Raiders last week, and lots to celebrate in that one, pulling out a win. But tell us what happened on that play and how you're feeling. Well, basically, I just caught a pass, and I turned the field, and DB must have went. He went low on me, and um, kind of jarred my knee a little bit. Tried to get back in the game. I did a few more plays, and um, it just didn't feel right. Got the MRI. I'm thankful that it's nothing that needs surgery or nothing that'll put me out for, you know, the season. Uh, I'll be back in a few weeks. Just need to heal up, need to do some rehab, and I'll be back in, in a few weeks. So um, that's a blessing. Obviously frustrated uh, mm. that I have to miss some time, especially got the Ravens coming in town. Had that circle for a while. So for uh, that's kind ah. of upsetting that I won't be able to play that game. But um, I'm just thankful that. It's nothing serious and that I'll be able to, you know, heal up, rehab up and be back in a few weeks. <laughs> Will you be on the sideline? For, I love that you're so optimistic, by the way. It's incredible that you, you find positive in that because it could have been so much worse. Will you be on the sideline? Because you could definitely get like a an air horn or something and just start talking trash to everybody on the Ravens. I'd like to see that. Yeah, um, I don't I don't see how they could not let me be on the sideline. So I'm going to make my way out there for sure. <laughs> Don't hey. get one of these, though. Don't get one of these, though, No, 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 no. I ain't going to be in the mix too much, but I'm going to let them know that. I'm going to let them know how I'm feeling, though. <laughs> and don't pull that Tomlin. Remember when Tom, Don't put that foot out on that field. <laughs> trip, trip anybody while you're hey, on the I, sideline. No, I'll just go uh, tap Listen, there's one. a... <laughs> Tomorrow, break on the sideline, just go you tap would. <laughs> I would love to see that. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you're going to be okay. And there, we have positive stuff to talk about because I'm I'm happy, and I know you are. The Saints get a huge win. It's 24 zip, a shutout over those Raiders uh, and your boy Josh Jacobs. So what clicked for this team? Man, that's that's Saints football, and 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 that's the type of ball we play when we you know don't have self-inflicted wounds, don't allow big plays, and really don't you know shoot ourselves in the foot. And that's the type of football we play. We were dominant on offense, uh, you know, c consistent on offense, moved the chains, didn't turn the football over. And on defense, you stop the run, don't allow any explosive plays. And, you know, that's, that's Saints football. And when we play the way that we're supposed to play, that's the kind of result we get. So uh, got to keep building from that. Got to keep getting mm. better from that. Obviously got a great team coming in on Monday, the Ravens. So got to continue that momentum moving forward. Mm, I like what you're saying, but are you sure this isn't the reason y'all beat the Raiders? Talking about team, yeah. New Orleans Saints, you know what I mean. Yeah. We gotta represent Whoa. the city up in here. Yeah. We're doing everything and I might shit a tear. I gotta go hard, yeah. I gotta go in, uh. and all we gotta do is get a uh. <laughs> Let's go. I hope you got that. We in here, let's go. <laughs> hey. Mark. Hey, that boy was snapping, man. He was ripping. You got to put that boy in the booth. <laughs> Jay Boo Winston in the booth. Rap game shawty. He got the rap game Jay locked Boo. down. Hey. Is that something he does normally? Hey, he, he went in the locker room, too, and he dropped some bars, too. He was dropping bars in the locker room. I missed that one. But he dropped a whole nother, he dropped a whole nother track in the locker room. That boy was going crazy. <laughs> But that's the energy we need. You know, that's the vibes we have. We needed to get the swag back. Ooh, ooh, I think I got I mean, my swagger back. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that contributed to the win. And, of course, nothing against Andy Dalton, who played very well last week. But, obviously, there's something that goes on when Jameis is in that locker room. It's electric. When will we see him back under center, Mark? Hey, it's... We got two good guys, man, and we all love Jameis, and he's a great player, great leader. He's our guy, man, you know what I mean? But uh, Andy's been playing well. You know, the team made the decision that they made, you know what I mean? So um, we just support both our guys. We wish the best from both of our guys. I love both of them, man. And, um, you know, Jameis is our guy for sure. He brings the energy, he brings the leadership, and he doesn't change regardless. So uh, I admire that about him. I appreciate that about him. And you know I'm rooting for Jameis, so... We all are rooting for Jameis, but, you know, rooting for Andy, too. I love them both, man. Those are both my QBs. <laughs> you're the best teammate ever, and you're on the great team that's 
competitive. You're one game back of the Falcons in the NFC South. And we talked a lot last week about are you more frustrated or are you more optimistic? And you sort of said that you were both. What did this win do for the team as far as remaining competitive in the division? What's, what's the mentality? We know we're essentially a half game out. You know, we beat the Falcons and um, we control our own destiny. We have mm. to see all those teams one more time. And um, but it's really one week at a time. So, you know, we're in a division where we're one game back or half game back, however you want to put it. And we got a big game coming in Monday night against a great team. So we got to keep handling our business. We handle our business. We play our style of football. We prepare the way we know how to pray. Uh, we prepare the way we know how to prepare and everything else will handle itself. So uh, we got to keep winning our games and uh, got to keep getting better. Got to keep improving. We'll see the Falcons, we'll see the mm -hmm. Bucks, we'll see the Panthers, <laughs> we'll see all of them at some point. So um, we just got to keep getting better, keep improving, and doing what we need to do week in and week out. I'm really still liking this idea of you being like Dennis the Menace out there and just messing with Harbaugh, like pranking them, putting like whoopee cushions on their sideline just to mess with them for this game. Like I think you you, you have a role in the outcome of that game Monday night. Yeah, I just got to find out where they stayed now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to find out. Yeah. I can do <laughs> Mark Ingram is pushing the fire alarm at the team hotel. Like Harbaugh's standing outside hey. in his robe with his sleep mask. I like where we this got, is headed. Yeah, we're going to have the band outside the hotel playing all night. Nobody gets good <laughs> sleep. Like. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's good. Uh, I want to talk about Alvin Kamara because he's also a huge part of that win last week in 158 scrimmage yards. He had three touchdowns. I know you're happy about that. And I'm happy the trade deadline came and went because there were some rumors going on about Alvin. Uh, so what has he been like and what has it been like in the locker room and in the running backs room with all those trade rumors leading up to this? Man, we haven't really been paying too much attention to it. You know, I was a great player, man, and I think he's done a great job this year stepping into a leadership role, um, you know, with the captain on his chest. Uh, you know, I've seen him come in from a pup, so to see that transition and that growth uh, being from a rookie to now being a captain and being a leader and being, you know, as productive as he is on the team, uh, I'm just super proud for him. I'm excited for him. He'll continue to get better. He'll continue to thrive more in that leadership role. And we always say that. Uh, you know, the team runs through us. The identity of the team runs through us. We're the energy. We're kind of like the spark plug of the team. So for, um, you know, him to go out there and have a big game in the run game, have a, a huge game in the, in the, in the, in the passing game, um, I think that lit a fire on our team. And um, that energy kind of resonates through the whole team. So, um, you know, we weren't – I think we kind of were – you kind of heard it in the background about hopefully AK, you know, was mm -hmm. staying around. But um, we didn't have any doubt that he would be around. And um, but you hear stuff and, you know, that stuff comes from somewhere. It doesn't just come from yeah. nothing. You know what I mean? So um, we were all kind of confident that he would be here. Um, and we're all obviously happy that he's here. Just the leader that he is and the player that he is, um, you know, huge impact for the team. Well, I, mean, I knew he was hearing about it because he's sending out those cryptic tweets. You got to yeah. you know, like and some of you boys the boys in that Saints like, locker room just hit that send button quick. Yeah, he yeah he sent out the tweet. He yeah. was like eating the popcorn, like watching all the rumors. I'm like, look at this dude. He a menace, like. <laughs> but no. But I bet it. I would be that, in my feelings too. But I think you know, yeah. Go ahead. Glad that the glad that the deadline passed and he's still in, in black and gold. <laughs> well, because you guys could still take the division, make a deep run in the playoffs. You got two good quarterbacks. We'll see what happens here. Uh, I want to get to something fun that we like to do. Of course, we're switching gears to something you're passionate about. You are part owner, my friend, of the Major League Soccer team, DC United. This is a red card. This is a yellow card. You know what we're going to do as you're passionate uh, about your love of soccer. We did this with you last year. And DC we're you, Vamos United. Let's go. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, look at you, Mark. A little, a little volley. I got to still work on it a little bit, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's a little something. I do a little something. I got a little footy skills. <laughs> little footy skills. We like it. All right, we're going to do, uh, okay, we're going to do this one first. It's the before the Bills Packers game. You saw it. Stefan Diggs and Jair Alexander, you've played up there. You know how it goes. They're coming out the same tunnel. They're trash talking. I'm told this is a big no no in soccer. The tunnel entrance to the field is sacred ground. So, what is the call here? That's a little yellow card, man. Football is a little different than football, you know what I mean? And um, that's just that's just two highly competitive guys, two prideful guys, 
and they letting it known that we're here all day. You're going to have to see me all day. So um, I don't have no problem with that. Just a little yeah. yellow. Did nobody put hands on nobody? That's what I want to see. Just a little see. talk. Just a little banner. Yeah. So I got a yellow. I want you on the Raven sideline Monday night doing that to the entire team, just chirping at them the whole time. <laughs> okay, we're going to look at Eagles Steelers. Jalen Hurts to AJ Brown for one of his three touchdowns of the day. Brown's points, Brown points out the defenders he just beat and he's flagged on the play. Mark, do you give him a card? I'm giving him a yellow. I'm giving him a yellow. I, I took y'all up top. I snatched on both of y'all. I just gotta let you and you know about it. I'm in the end zone, we whooping on y'all, and you gotta feel me, and you gotta feel me too. So it's just a yellow card. I don't got no problem. You're, you're a good ref today, I love this. All right, let's go to a division rival. Panthers wide receiver, also somebody that we were talking about all day yesterday as far as trades. DJ Moore, 62 yard touchdown catch mark. He removes his helmet. He gets the controversial unsportsmanlike conduct. We know what happens. The rest, they lose the game. Are you penalizing DJ Moore? Yeah, this is a red card. This is a red card. If um, he hadn't got a penalty and he took his helmet off on the sideline, I'd give him yellow but it will prove costly. The kicker misses the extra point. They're going to overtime, they can't finish the game. So you make a huge play, get the team mm -hmm. back in. Uh, you make a huge play, get the team back tied up for the lead, about to take the lead. And um, that's a red card, you know? We took a loss, the team took a loss, and um, that's a red card. I gotta give my boy a red card. Mark, if, this is, if you're his teammate on the sideline, what are you saying to him? I'm saying, listen, bro, you made a huge play, and, um, <laughs> you know, we can't have that, man. Like, like literally, we're about to walk off the field and win the game once we kick this extra point. You can take your helmet off on, over here on the sideline, show your face to the camera over here on the sideline. Everybody can know who you are over here on the sideline, but not on the field, you know what I mean? And I saw a rule where they say technically he was off of the field, so it wasn't supposed to be a penalty, but they did call it. So this is a red card. DJ Moore, great play. You're a great player, but we just can't have that. He knows that. He said it. So. <laughs> we can't have that. Okay, let's go to the AFC East. Jets, Patriots, New England running back Ramondre Stevenson gets tackled by Carl Lawson by the hair. That is legal in the NFL. Should it be? No. Ooh. And I know Carl Lawson personally. This is my fam, and it's a good friend of mine, and I'm giving him a red card. You are out of the game, fam. You are one of the strongest, most explosive dudes in the league, and you got to resort to pulling some dude's hair. And he's on the ground, as you see, and he continues to pull the hair. That is just offensive. And Carl Lawson, that is a red card. You are ejected, my friend. Wow, that, you're really good at this. This is like, you really, we've really found a good lane for you, you judging these plays. You're the best, Mark Ingram. Thank you for being uh, smiley and optimistic. We can't wait to get you back on the field. But until then, we will see you on those sidelines. Uh, and we love you and appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Mark. We love you and appreciate you too. And you always got to be positive. You always got to be optimistic. If you're negative, that energy resonates and it transpires. So we always want to be positive and optimistic and look forward to positive things. So I love you, and I'll see you next week. It's well said. Mark Ingram, <laughs> love you too. Talk to you soon. More to come. We're in New York. We're going to talk a little. Uh, Big Apple Shams joining us to talk a little Knicks. Uh, I mean, you. Li I literally, you could tell me Seymour Butts is on the team, and I'd be like, oh, really? Seymour Butts is on the Knicks? I have no idea, but I'm getting prepped with Shams after this. Welcome back to Up and Adams. Welcome to the family. New, or, uh, New Orleans Pelicans saying that to me. I mean, they. I think the same people who run the same social media run the Pelicans. So I think they were very excited to hear that I was uh, supporting the Pelicans this year. And why am I doing that? Because Shams told me to, and I do as I'm told. Uh, as we have the lead NBA insider, woo woo, for the Athletic NBA. He is on FanDuel TV's Run It Back. Shams, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Ever since we spoke, I think it's been all positive vibes for the Pelicans. Uh, they've been a little injured, though. You know, Zion Williamson got hurt. He's back. Um, I know you, were, you, you, you showed some frustration or some sadness when they had all those guys hurt. They won that game. <laughs> uh, I think Brandon Ingram is okay, on good. the way back, uh, hopefully in the next week or so. So I think they're an underdog because you root for them. You root for them to stay healthy. Um, and I think, I, I, I think they can get there, hopefully, in the next couple of weeks. I'm hearing a lot of Zion's never healthy, so I'm a little nervous about that. Is that true? 
I mean, he's had a hip contusion this year. There's nothing major. So in his past, okay. yes, last year he missed the okay, whole good. year. Um, but a couple years ago when he was healthy, he put up big numbers. I do think he'll be fine. You know, you, you, never, you never say never when it comes to injuries and health with players. But if he's healthy, this team is one to root for. We root for his health. We root for Brandon Ingram's health. And, and I think because I think it makes the league yes. better for sure. Listen, we just had Mark Ingram on, New Orleans Saints, and he, you know, obviously they share a city there, and he said all you have to do is have positive vibes, and that's what we have for the Pelicans, and we should live our lives that way. I'm in New York City, where I used to live, and I'm going to the Knicks game tonight. I've only been to one Knicks game in my entire life. This is my second one. They're playing the Hawks, I believe. Give me what I need to know. I literally can't name a player. Well, as a fan tonight, I don't know where you're sitting. I don't know what the people around you are going to be interacting oh, like, on. but... Trey Young is going to get some 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 hate tonight. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure the fans are going to be out for him. But I feel like he embraces it. He like plays up to a great level. So you're going to get some jeering for Trey Young. You might even be involved in that. Uh, but beyond that, I think the Knicks are a pretty fun team to watch. They play hard. They play the right way. They got Jalen Brunson, their new point guard, and I think he brings them like a swag. He brings them a leadership that they're missing. Julius Randle's playing at a better level this year. Um, here's some news: Quentin Grimes. He has not played this year. He was the guy that the Knicks refused to trade in a Donovan Mitchell deal. He could make his debut tonight, I'm told. So that is some positive news um, for the Knicks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think they're a hard-playing team. And on the other end, this is a Hawks team that was okay, in the Eastern Conference Finals just two years ago. So they're, they're a really good team. Yeah. Um, they, they got DeJounte Murray in the offseason. So I, I, think, I think it'll be a fun game. I think you're going to do a great game tonight. Shams over here breaking news. I love that. I uh, yeah. Knicks fans hate Trey Young. Am, do you, should I boo? Like as of somebody who's who should I boo? What should I? I don't know. That's a tough I one. On? I think I think I think you just gotta let your emotions at the game just just lead you. You know, let, <laughs> just just let your heart lead you to whatever it's direction well you want to go. Um, but I, listen, you might be impacted by the people around you though. So if they're cheering for him or cheering for the Knicks, you guys That's might true. get lost in the Knicks. You know, so we'll see. I'm, I don't like when people get booed or bullied, so I'll probably end up like embracing him. But I'll, I will embrace the moment, like you're saying. Okay, what do you Better like at games? In New York. I want to know. Nets. Like, are you are you overly? What do you like, mean? Oh man! Do you cheer? Do you cheer? Like, what's your what's your go to right now? I think it depends on where I'm sitting. I have great seats, I believe. So I will be, uh, you know, I will just embrace the moment as it comes. I like to people watch. I obviously like to have a couple of beers. So it depends. I think it's, you know, the over under on like two and a half beers is when I'm my best fan. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be rooting and cheering. And there's nothing, I mean, NBA games are so funny. I rarely get to go, so I'm super looking forward to it. Um, I have a question for you. What is like the, the best part of your job, being an insider, breaking this kind of news, working all the time? What's the best part? I think probably the relationships. It's the ability to connect with people, people that I grew up, you know, being a fan of in some respects. And then you also got to look at it from a job perspective. But I think this is all stuff that I was obsessed with growing up, you know, when it comes to news behind the scenes and doing interviews with players, talking to players, talking to people around the league. Like there's so, so many relationships I've been able to, to, to get from this. So it's probably the relationship side of it. Um, you know, I used to write a lot more when, when I was, you know, trying to find my writing voice when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. Um, but now being able to do TV, uh, being, to, being able to write, I feel like I'm, I'm definitely a lot more diverse in my abilities. And, but at the end of the day, it's really just relationships. So it's, it's fun. And Run It Back is really fun and it's getting better every day. Of course, you guys are building chemistry. Are you embracing the TV side? How has that been? I, I, I love it. I love the group that we have and, and Chandler Parsons, shout out to him. I think it was a it was an interesting first week for him. He literally got married and had a honeymoon and started a FanDuel show <laughs> in the same week. So shout out Chandler Parsons for that. Uh, but he's he's coming along great. We have Eddie Gonzalez, who's a who's a producer, who's an on air guy. He's really a glue, I think, of the show. Michelle Beadle, just an amazing host for us. She's like the quarterback. She's able to and she knows the game so well. Uh, and is able to she she like literally knows what's going on behind the scenes she's, she's able to contextualize it talk about it uh so it's great to have her and you know i just try to do my part give information here and there and, and but i think we have a we have a great group so yeah shameless plug on FanDuel tv yeah. monday tuesday wednesday uh 10 a.m eastern time run it back <laughs> 
No, we love it. We love it. We know the NBA trade deadline day is coming up at some point, too, so we're going to have to have you back. But, uh, you know, congratulations on the show. I'll be rude. I'm going to boo him, I think. I just decided. I'm going <laughs> to lean into the booing of Trey. So that'll you be me, me that's posted. getting in some fight and throwing my elbows. You I will. gotta keep me posted. I will do what that. You do, Shams, you're the best. <laughs> appreciate you. And also, we, we, we gotta make sure we start off the show right because we're leading to you. So appreciate you having me on. <laughs> you're the best by Shams.